Sunday morning to you, our viewers. We welcome you to Revival Time Assembly's online service, and we thank you for inviting us into your living room or wherever you are, wherever you may view in. I would like to send out special greetings to our senior pastors, Reverend Lloyd and Norma Hart. We want you to know that we love and appreciate you, and that we remember you every day in our prayers. So, Pastor, we thank you for giving us this privilege to do this service this morning. Let us pray. Father, we thank you at this time, O oh God, for this day. We thank you that this is a day you have made, and we would rejoice and we would be glad in it. Father, we pray for every aspect of this service that is coming up, for the, for the worship, for the special, for the ministry of the word, for the communion service, dear God. We just pray your blessing over every aspect of this service this morning. In your precious name I pray. Amen. At this time, I would like to invite Sister Pat Campbell to come and lead us in worship. Sister Pat.
has won all freedom. He reigns on high. My God is risen. You are alive. He has won all freedom. He reigns on high. The power of sin is broken. Jesus overcame it all. Oh, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. He has won all freedom. Jesus has won it all. Oh, hallelujah. You have won the victory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You have won it all for me. I worship you, Lord. Oh, I worship you, Lord Jesus. I worship you, Almighty God. There is none like you. I worship you, O Prince of Peace. That is what I long to do. I give you praise. For you are my righteousness. Hallelujah. I worship you. All my There is none like you. Jesus, 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 there is something about your name master savior jesus like the fragrance after the rain Jesus, let all heaven and earth proclaim kings and kingdoms, dear Lord, pass away. But there's something about that name. Just call his name Jesus. He's my Jesus. He's Jesus. There is something about that name call him master he's savior it's jesus 
like the fragrance after the rain. I worship you, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And earth proclaim kings and the kingdoms will all pass away, but there's something, yes, there's something. Oh, there is. Something about that name. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. I worship you, Jesus. There is something. Hallelujah. There is. Thank you, Sister Pat, for that special worship you did this morning. And this time, we want, to do, we want to go directly into the ministry of the Word. This morning, we have with us our very own Reverend Anthony Roberts. As many of you would know, he is the assistant pastor at Revival Time Assembly. He is also the district bishop for the Pentecostal Assemblies of the West Indies South District. And the Assistant National Bishop of Pawi, Trinidad and Tobago. Reverend Roberts, we are thankful to have you this morning, and I want to turn the mic over to you for the Ministry of the Word. A pleasant good morning to all, and welcome to our communion service as we celebrate this first Sunday in the month of October. God's blessing to you, and we trust that you will experience the Lord as we share from His Word. Human beings are designed by God with brains, and this brain causes us to remember certain things. Yet many times we forget even important events in our lives. Sometimes after we forget, we jokingly say, especially if you are aged, that was a senior moment. But we do tend to forget things. Our scripture text is taken from Luke chapter 22 where it records Jesus at his last meal says there that he took the bread, he gave thanks, and gave it to them saying, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise also, he took the cup. And when he had supped saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. Jesus seemed to know that human beings have a tendency to forget. And so, in this Last Supper, he gives them an example and tells them, I want you to remember certain things about me. This short exhortation is entitled, This Do in Remembrance of Me. Father, we thank you today that you have given us the opportunity to celebrate this communion service. And we do it, as you instructed, in remembrance of you. So help us today, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And so, Luke 22 identifies the event. We call it the Last Supper. It was celebrated during the Feast of Unleavened Bread at the Passover time. Jesus had a few days earlier made a triumphant entry into Jerusalem on a donkey, signifying fulfillment of scripture. Jesus had attempted several times before to explain to his disciples that he was going to be betrayed and crucified and he would die. And so on this event, as recorded in Matthew 26, verse 2, he told them, you know that after two days in the feast of the Passover, 
the Son of Man is going to be betrayed and to be crucified. The disciples had real difficulty in understanding this concept. This Messiah, this King of the Jews, dying, crucified. And so as this meal continues, Jesus had to say to them, listen, it's time is coming. And so when he identifies Judas as the betrayer, things got very serious in this Last Supper. The Bible says that the disciples were exceedingly sorrowful and they began to realize that what he had been telling them all along, that he was going to die, was about to come to pass. And so in this mood, he chooses to institute what we call the Holy Communion and gives them certain emblems and told them, whenever you do this, you must do it in remembrance of me. So he says to them, he took the bread, he blessed it, he broke it, he gave it to them and he said, this is my body. He took the cup and he gave thanks. And so in this last meal where Jesus is telling his disciples, I want to give you something that will cause you to remember me. He takes two th sacraments. He takes two things, the bread and the wine. What did Jesus want us to remember? What did Jesus want his disciples to remember? He says, you must have this feast and I want you every time you do it, to remember me. What exactly did he want us to remember? I want to suggest two things this morning about what he wanted us to remember. Two things that will give us some clues. I want to suggest that the tokens used, the bread and the wine, and the timing of this event gives us clues as to what Jesus wanted his disciples to remember, and of course what we should remember. The tokens, the bread and the wine. The timing of this event was the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Passover time. Let's look at the tokens, the bread. I'm sure that Jesus wanted his disciples to remember many things about him. And he could have given them many other tokens, but he chose the bread. Whenever we go on a vacation, we buy a souvenir. If you go to Paris, you buy a mini Eiffel Tower. He wants something to remember the event. And Jesus is telling them, this bread... This wine, whenever you do this, you must remember me. Jesus could have chosen a fish as a symbol to remind them that they are fishers of men. He could have chosen a whip to remind them that there is a pending judgment. He could have chosen bread to, simplify his, to symbolize his miracles when he fed the 5,000. But yes, he chose bread. And he said to them, this bread is to remind you of my body. My body. So what does Jesus want us to remember about his body as we take the communion? Two things. One, I want to suggest he wants us to remember his humanity. And secondly, he wants us to remember the Old Testament animal sacrifices. His humanity. Philippians 2.8 says that he, Jesus, being in the form of God, thought in that robbery to be equal with God. It says that he was found in fashion as a man. He humbled himself. And became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. He was 100% God, yet 100% man. He slept, he ate, he was hungry, he was man. At that time, there were Gnostics who would have doubted that Jesus could have come in a bodily, bodily form. And so when Colossians 2.9 says, In him, Jesus, dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Jesus wants us to remember as we take that emblem, the bread, that token, to remember that he came in a body. He left the glory of heaven and he came to earth just to save us. He wants us to remember. He wants us to remember as we take this emblem, this token representing his body, of all the animal sacrifices of the Old Testament. If you reflect on the Old Testament, there was the burnt offering, the animal sacrifice for general atonement. There was the grain offering, an expression of devotion. There was a peace offering, free will offering. There was sin offerings and guilt offering. There were several offerings that used animals as sacrifices. And Jesus is saying to us and to them, I want you to remember those sacrifices that were made in the Old Testament. I want you to remember. And of course, with his dying on the cross... He would have done away with all of the Old Testament animal sacrifices. In fact, Hebrews 10, 12 tells us, But this man, after he offered one sacrifice for sin, forever set at the right hand of God. So as we take the communion service, remembering through this particular 
emblem, this bread representing his body, that no longer do we have to go through the rituals of all the Old Testament sacrifices. The ritual of the burnt offering, the grain offering, the peace offering. All of that, he's saying, remember that my body, I, as Hebrew said, offered myself as one sacrifice, as a better sacrifice forever. And I sit down at the right hand of God. He wants us to remember his broken body sacrifice for us. Amen. Amen. The second token we are familiar with in this communion service is the wine. The wine. And this wine is symbolic of so many things that Jesus wants us to remember. We are aware of how wine is made by the crushing of the grapes. Aligned to the crushing of his body. How that he was bruised and his blood shed. How as Isaiah said, he was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. How he took all those stripes. That body that shed the blood. And so the wine speaks of that crushing that Jesus would have gone through. The wine speaks of the blood sacrifices of the Old Testament. In Leviticus, Leviticus we read how that the priests would have to kill an animal and sprinkle his blood on different things as he would offer sacrifices unto God for the atonement of sin. And so, as Hebrews 9.21 reminds us, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. So when Jesus took this wine and he says, this is my blood, he's telling us and he wants us to remember that my blood was shed. Because without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. And we can stand and rejoice because his blood was shed. So that we could have forgiveness from sin. Those are some of the things he wants us to remember. And so Peter would have remembered that. When Peter wrote in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18 and 19, he says, For as much as you know that you are not redeemed with corruptible things such as silver or gold, from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Jesus as a lamb without blemish and without spot. So many years later, as Peter would have reflected on this communion service, and he writes First Peter, he would be careful to say that it was the precious blood of Jesus who went as a lamb without blemish and without slaughter that caused our redemption. What a powerful testimony. That as we take our communion service, we are remembering, we are remembering the blood shed by Jesus on the cross. The other apostle, John, he was also remembered as he wrote in 1 John chapter 1 verse 7. He would have written, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sins. So they remember that this wine, this token is representing the blood of Jesus shed for the remission of our sins. Interestingly enough, all the animal sacrifices and the blood shed in the Old Testament was absolutely ineffective in actually dealing with sin. Because as the writer of Hebrews says in chapter 6, he says to us, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by the, his own blood, he entered once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. He goes on to say, that if the blood of bulls and of goats or the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean, sanctified to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Jesus, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge our consciences? The blood that was shed in the Old Testament had the effect of simply covering sin. This precious blood of Jesus, that this emblem, this token, this wine represents, has the effect of actually cleansing away our sin. And not only that, affecting our consciences, as this verse 14 says, purging even our consciences. So when we take this emblem, this token, this wine, we are to remember, oh yes, that grateful day when Jesus took away all of our sins. Amen. So the tokens in this first communion, in the Last Supper, really points to us of what Jesus wants us to remember. His humanity. That he was the perfect sacrifice. 
as well as his blood was shed for our sins. I want to continue by looking at the timing of this event. The timing. And so this event, as Luke chapter 22 tells us, took place at the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which was the Passover. Now, there were seven major feasts that the Jews celebrated. And each feast particularly celebrated an event that took place in their history. So we'd have had the Passover feast, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of First Fruits, the Feast of Pentecost, the Feast of Trumpets, the Feast of Atonement, the Feast of Tabernacles. Each one of them had significance to the Jews. Jesus could have chosen another timing, any other feast, but he chose this one, the Passover feast, because there was special significance in this feast as it relates to Jesus. You will remember how this Passover feast got started. It signified that when the children of Israel were about to leave Egypt, how that they were instructed to take a young sheep or goat and sacrifice it and sprinkle the blood on their doorposts and on their lintels. So that when the angel of death passed and saw that blood, the angel passed over and there was no death in that family. Hence the term Passover, Passover. And so that night in the original Passover, all the Israelite children were spared, but the Egyptians were not. And so it reminds us of what Paul would have said, that Christ is our Passover. He was sacrificed for us. And so Jesus chose this particular feast, the timing of this Last Supper, the feast of the Passover, to really let us know that he was the one now replacing that Passover feast. So when we take that token representing his, his blood, we are reminded again that he was our Passover lamb. Amen. Amen. Now really, all the Old Testament feasts were actually types of Christ. They all point to something that Jesus did for us. For us. So when we look at the Feast of Unleavened Bread, that was to celebrate their deliverance from Egypt. And so it also points to Christ who would have delivered us from sin and sin's bondage. The, the Feast of First Fruits was at the start of the harvest. And again, that points to Christ, the start of our new life in Christ. The Feast of Trumpets, the end of the harvest. And again, the start of the end of one, old man, start of a new. The Feast of Tabernacles, they were to go in tents to remember their sojourn in the wilderness. And again, it points to Christ. This life we have in Christ, between our salvation and our everlasting Canaan that we are to celebrate. The Day of Atonement was an important feast for them as they brought their sacrifices on that particular day for the priest to present for them to receive the covering of their sin. And of course, Jesus, the lamb slain for our atonement. But I remember Jesus selected this particular feast, the feast of the Passover, because there was special significance. And again, all the feasts that they had in the Old Testament were just shadows. Listen to what Colossians 2, chapter 2 verse says. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink, or in respect of a holy day, or of a new moon, of, a Sabbath day, of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. So while all these feasts point to Jesus, they were but a shadow of things to come. Amen. And when we take this token, when we take this wine in our communion service, we are saying, Lord, we thank you for all the things that went before in the Old Testament. They are just shadows, but we thank you that you would have fulfilled all the requirements. In the Old Testament, they had to go through all these feasts just to get a taste, just to get a shadow. But as we celebrate communion and we take this token of your, the, the wine representing your blood, we can celebrate. We no longer need these feasts. In fact, we have everything in Jesus. In Christ dwells the fullness of the Godhead body. And it's, all, it's all wrapped up in Jesus. So what Jesus was telling them, as they engage in this Last Supper, as they took these tokens, the bread and the wine, as they reflected in the time, the feast of Passover, he was really telling them that as of today, I'm starting a new dispensation. It's all going to be wrapped up in me because this blood, this, this wine will represent my blood. This bread will represent my body. It's all going to be about me. And so as they would have 
gone to the Garden of Gethsemane, as they would have seen Jesus being betrayed and arrested, as they would have fallen above Calvary's hill and see that crucifixion. We pray that even as we see these things in our communion service, that we can rejoice because God provided through Jesus Christ a better way. And that's what Hebrew says, that now in Christ we have a better way. So remember. Therefore, as we celebrate this communion service today, we don't want it to be just another communion service, just another ritual. We want it that as Jesus says, this do in remembrance of me. So as we celebrate the communion in a little while, we'll be taking that wine and that bread, those symbols, those tokens, and we're going to be reflecting on the cross. And we're going to be saying, Lord, thank you that we can remember Calvary. Thank you that we can remember your blood and your body. Thank you that we can remember, oh God, that you are our Passover lamb. So we want to remember you, oh God, because we do it in remembrance of you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you today that your goodness continues to be bestowed upon us. Lord, we thank you today that we can listen to your word and we can learn from your word. We thank you that even though our mental faculties may fail, you have given us this institution of the communion service that we, oh God, will remember. And so we want to remember you today. We do this in remembrance of you. Thank you that we can reflect and remember with joy and gladness because of what you did for us. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. God bless you. We want to ask our two special ladies this morning, Sister Anika Philip and Sister Turon Nicholas, to come and bless us with a special number. Wash his feet with my tears and 
Thank you, ladies, for that beautiful song. And now we'd like to invite Reverend Roberts to come back to the podium and lead us in the communion service. It's always a privilege to celebrate the Lord's Supper. As we read in that first Lord's Supper, where it says, As they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples. And he said, Take it, this is my body. And he took the cup, he gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. He advised them that whenever they have a communion service, they are to do this in remembrance of him. So I want to invite you to take your emblem representing his body. I want to invite you to have your cup ready representing his blood. And as you would have shared, he wants us whenever we take this token, this emblem of his body, to remember certain things. Our minds must focus on what this symbolizes. His body. His humanity. Him, the God-man, coming in the form of man. This reminds us that he paid that price for us. That he was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. This causes us to remember. Amen. Amen. So I trust you have your emblem representing his body with you as we pray before we partake together. Father, we thank you today that you wanted us to remember this event. You instituted the Lord's Supper so that we could remember what your body represents. Thank you for taking the wounding and the beating and the stripes for us. By your stripes we are healed, O oh God. And thank you that we can look back even mentally 2,000 years ago and see you, your body, being whipped and nailed and pierced. While it might look like a gruesome sight for us. We can say like the songwriter, amazing love, how can it be that thou, my God, you died for me? And so we partake of this emblem representing your broken body. We are going to take it and do this in remembrance of you. Amen. Let's eat together and be thankful. I want to invite you to take the emblem, the token representing his blood. And again, he says to us, every time you do this, 
you are to remember him. And so, Father, we lift up this cup representing your blood. And we remember what it represents. That without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. And so we thank you that you shed your blood. You gave one sacrifice for all time. So that this blood can cleanse us. Thank you, O God, that one day when we confessed our sins, your blood just cleansed us of every sin. Thank you. We remember that day. We remember that day. Thank you. Thank you that this blood will never lose its power. It continues to reach to the highest mountain and flow to the lowest valley. This blood that is continually available to us. We remember and we are so grateful to you, God. We do it in remembrance of you. Thank you, Jesus. So we want to take the cup and give thanks. And let's all drink together in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father, today again we are so grateful that we can have this fellowship with each other around the communion table. And we can experience this kinship because we are all members of your family. Blood, bought brothers and sisters in your family. We can celebrate that unity around your supper. And so we continue to give you all the praise, the honor and the glory. Lord, continue to bless the people as they would go forth today and throughout this week. We give you praise, we give you honor, we give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Thank you very much, Reverend Roberts. Our communion service is always a very special service as we, as we remember all that Jesus did for us on the cross. We have some special announcements for you, and we trust that you would join us in these services. Listen carefully as Brother Marcel goes through the announcements. Good morning, RTA. These are your announcements for this week and upcoming events. Sunday morning services continue on YouTube. Fellowship with us next Sunday, October the 11th, as we welcome from our Taruba RTA branch work, Reverend Merle James. Then the following Sunday, October the 18th, our guest speaker will be none other than Reverend Noreen Dutton of the Hermitage RTA Branch Work. Tune in and receive your blessing. Subscribe to RTA's YouTube channel and tune into our daily devotionals Monday to Friday at 6.45 a.m. Each week we feature a familiar face with insightful, relatable and inspiring knowledge into God's Word. Start your day off in prayer with your RTA family. Join us on the Zoom platform at 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. Monday to Friday. Enjoy worship, exaltations, and powerful prayer sessions. Submit your prayer requests and even share what the Lord has done in your life. That's RTA's weekly online prayer meetings. Delve deeper into God's Word with RTA's Bible study. Learn much more about God's Word, how to study it, understand it, and apply it to your daily Christian walk. Log on to RTA's Zoom ID and password, Tuesday evenings at 7.30 p.m. Trust me, you don't want to miss it. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. For those interested in giving your tithes, offerings, or other love gifts, please contact the church office at 652 4040 during the hours of 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. for more details. Have you been seeking God's face for breakthrough, healing, or deliverance? The Bible says where two or three are gathered together, He is in the midst. Join us and agree in prayer for your miracle every Friday at 10 a.m. on YouTube. Kids Church is now virtual. That's right, RTA's Kids Church is now online. Tune in on the Zoom platform for a fun and interactive time in God's presence every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. for kids between the ages of 4 to 12 years old. Parents, you are encouraged to log on with your kids for this enjoyable time. See you there. Victorious Women's Ministries presents Trauma, part 4 of the Tapping into the Overflow series. Our specially invited speaker will be Reverend Dr. Annette Joseph. Join us on Zoom, 
Wednesday the 14th of October at 7 p.m. as we continue with another exhilarating session. You don't want to miss it. And those were your announcements. Stay safe and have a blessed week. Thank you very much, Marcel. Before we dismiss, as is customary, we have the singing of the Lord's Prayer. And we'd like to invite Sister Turan Nicholas to do the Lord's Prayer for us. Thank you, Turan, and we'd like to thank you, our viewers, for tuning in, tuning in this morning, and we trust that you were blessed by this service today. We look forward to seeing you at our various services throughout this week on the Zoom platform and on YouTube. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and be gracious unto you. Do have a good week.